Hey everybody, this is Mike with Free Roaming Photography and in this video we're going to discuss when to shoot vertically and when to shoot horizontally. There's a right time and place for each one and so that's what we're going to get into in here with a lot more detail. And just a quick reminder, I do offer private photography workshops here in Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks. If this is something you want to practice more in the field with real world examples with me, I'm happy to take you out and show you how to do that. Check out the link in the description for more information on that. And so without further ado, let's get going. So right off the that the horizontal orientation is how most cameras are designed to be held so that's intuitively how we want to take a photo naturally also our eyes are oriented horizontally and so vertical is just a different type of orientation that we're not quite used to or familiar with which we need to overcome because the vertical orientation can offer some powerful compositions and really some dynamic photos if we know when to use them properly so when you're composing a shot you want your photo to tell some kind of simple story a simple narrative within the photo and it doesn't have to be anything complex we're not talking about like a quentin tarantino type story but something that allows the photo to speak for itself if you have to explain what your photo is about and you have to point out the subject and what it's doing, then it's really not a good composition. And a lot of what we're going to talk about here is going to help you resolve that and create more powerful compositions. And the first thing you want to look for is you need to learn to read a scene. You need to learn to see what in that scene is what drew you in, what caused you to pull over or stop on a hike and admire something. What is it, what is calling you within that scene that makes you want to take a photo? Within and around that scene, what are the elements that are contributing to or detracting from that really basic narrative that creates that interesting photo that made you want to stop in the first place. So right away you want to look around that scene and see if your eye is going back and forth and if it's something long that you're looking at maybe there's something in the lower end or there's some big mountains up top or are your eyes going up and down? Is it something taller that drew you in that you wanted to focus in on? Before just jumping in and taking a quick photo you want to evaluate what's going on in that scene so that you really know where to zero in on. And that's where you start to notice, are those elements going left and right? Or are they going up and down? And likewise, are there any elements in the foreground that are adding to that scene that contribute to a simple narrative or something interesting going on throughout the photo? Or are they subtracting from it? Are they distracting? Are there some branches just kind of poking in that don't really have anything to do with what you're looking at in the distance? Now, a lot of your vertical shots are gonna revolve around vertical subjects. These can be trees, these can be waterfalls, these can be a really nice mountain peak, something like that, those all tend to lend themselves well to vertical shots. Likewise, horizontal shots lend themselves well to things that are going on across a landscape. Maybe there's some strong diagonal motion going on from different subjects or lines, and that lends itself well to getting read across the image. If you don't have a lot going on across the image, then you really want to focus on just going up and down to isolate the drama of that particular scene. So those are essentially the basics. Let's run through some specific examples so you can see exactly what I'm talking about in different scenarios. Now if you look at this shot from sunset at Badlands National Park, it's a really great shot and a lot's working for it because you have that really strong leading line coming in from the bottom and heading up toward the right. But at the same time, there's not a whole lot going on in the upper left that really makes it that compelling. All the emphasis is really over on the right side. So when I tried it again vertically and zoomed in a little bit, you can see it's a much stronger composition and much more interesting. Since I was zoomed in more, that created a little bit more interest in the sky zooming in on that little bit of light fading in the distance that put a little bit more emphasis on the light changing in the sky after sunset and likewise there's still that strong leading line coming in from the bottom left but rather than dissipating in the upper portion it now kind of follows more of those hills up toward the sky creating a stronger composition similarly with this image from the snake river overlook in grand teton national park the horizontal orientation is a very strong image that forest on the bottom left leads into the snake river which brings our eye up into the Teton Mountains which creates a really nice composition because there's a nice circular motion going through. At the same time though this vertical image trims out the left side and keeps a lot of the same subject matter in the image. Our eye still goes from the forest to the river and up to the mountains. It's just cropped down a little bit and more to the point. And then there's this image of Choya Cactus near the summit of Tubit Peak in the Phoenix Mountains Preserve in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a gorgeous sunset and the Choya Cactus are actually picking up some of that light creating a really beautiful 
beautiful shot. But you can see in the lower right, there's not really a lot going on of interest. The clouds above help to pull our eye to the right, but in the lower right, there's not really much that brings our eye back around. It's just sort of a dead spot within the image. So by going vertical, not only are we able to fit more of the Choya cactus in, which helps define the subject a little better, but we also still have a really dramatic sunset and a really beautiful image as a result. Likewise, there's a nice flow from the cactus that's in the foreground into the ones that are receding, which help our eye move into the sunset above. This photo is from the Superstition Mountains east of Phoenix, Arizona. It's a beautiful shot of a massive wildflower bloom below some cliffs on the far western side of the Superstition Mountains. And while it's a great shot that shows off the extensiveness of the bloom, again, there's not a lot going on on that left side that really contributes to a strong composition. So not only did I switch to a vertical orientation, I also moved over a little bit to put a little bit more focus on the brittle brush in the foreground as they recede up to the cliffs. This creates a much stronger composition that your eye wants to explore and move through with the cliffs defining the background and the larger brittle brush in the foreground. This grizzly bear walking through a meadow below the Teton Mountains in Grand Teton National Park creates a stunning scene by showing a much larger habitat for this grizzly bear. And while this horizontal orientation does technically work because the grizzly bear is walking into the frame, from right to left, you can see that if we shoot it vertically, the bear's still walking through, but it eliminates a lot more of the empty space that's still a little bit out of reach for that bear to, to walk into. In the vertical shot, the grizzly bear does still have some space to walk into, and we still get the stunning shot of the Teton Mountains defining the bear's habitat. In all the examples so far, both the horizontal and the vertical have been strong shots, but subjectively, I feel like the vertical in all these examples so far have been stronger simply because they get more to the point of the image. And that's also kind of the case with this image of the grizzly bear lakes in the Teton Mountains in Grand Teton National Park. This is below the paintbrush divide and as you ascend up to the divide you get a gorgeous view of the grizzly bear lakes which are seen in the foreground. Again this horizontal shot works really well because there's not really any empty space. Your eye travels through thanks to the stronger rust color rock up to Mount Moran in the upper right and then you follow the peaks back down to the grizzly bear lake so there's a really strong circular composition going on. But if my intent was to get the lakes themselves in a dramatic mountain environment, the vertical shot does that a little bit stronger. By shooting vertical, I was able to focus more on the lakes themselves and create more drama with the light and the shadow from the clouds above. It's still abundantly clear that this is an alpine wilderness deep in a large mountain range. So while the horizontal does work well for this particular subject, it doesn't put as much focus on the grizzly bear lakes. It's more of a general photo of the alpine environment in the Teton Mountains. Whereas the vertical, the subject is much more defined as the grizzly bear lakes. So hopefully you found those helpful and you have a better idea of when to shoot vertically or horizontally. But when in doubt, shoot both. This can be a tricky subject to wrap your head around, especially if you're new to photography and you're trying to understand composition. So shooting both will allow you to to evaluate on your computer after the fact which one really works well and which one isn't working quite as well. And you'll see that you might have a photo where there's not a whole lot going on to the side, but that vertical shot just really captures it. Or vice versa, you might have missed a good story going on with a horizontal shot and the vertical just doesn't effectively capture that shot. So definitely shoot both if you're new to this and you'll see in time which one is working stronger in certain situations. Like anything, with photography especially, it's all just practice. Practice. You got to practice and keep shooting to understand how these rules play with each other and when to do which and when to do the other. So I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments below. If you feel that I missed anything or you have some other tips you want to point out, definitely leave them down below as well. And if you want to check out those workshops, look for the link in the description. And thank you for watching and happy trails.